Hey, what's going on guys? It's been a long time coming, but finally the uh, HGUC Vargil is out. So it was shown and like announced at the same time that the Moon Gundam was, but then it took them a long, 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 long time to actually get around to producing this kit. So finally it's here. If you guys are unfamiliar with this, it's basically a purple version of the Moon Gundam. The head is different, the backpack is different, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, the main body is all pretty much gonna be exactly the same. It's just, like I said, purple, as you can tell from the box art here. And also, the box art should be a good identifier that this is, uh, of course, a premium Bandai kit. So there's not gonna be a whole lot to really see here on the outside of the box. So let's just go ahead and get it popped open here. As you can see too, the color of purple may be not what you're expecting as what was shown on the original prototype and then what was shown later uh, did differ a little bit in the actual tone of purple with it. So I know some of you are wondering what actual tone of purple you get in here in the box. Now of course you will have, it looks like, some Moon Gundam parts in here that you're not going to be using. So that's pretty interesting. But like I was saying, about the color, I think obviously if you're going to be painting, it doesn't really matter too much to you. But either way, it's going to be purple, whether it's not the exact quite right tone of purple that you were hoping for, it's purple. So <laughs> I wouldn't really complain about that too much. Uh, here is the parts list, and as you can see, a couple of leftover parts there from uh, the Moon Gundam runners, but not really a whole lot, just a few. And otherwise, not really too much else to see here in the manual. It's just all just the construction of that. You can see we are going to have a very Sazabi style backpack. But what I personally don't really like about this backpack is how the fuel tanks are, are plugged up into the underside of the funnel racks instead of coming out of the backpack, which is very strange. I'm not really sure I particularly like that about this sort of redesign of the Sazabi's backpack, essentially. But anyway, I'm sure we can probably modify that. We'll see here soon enough. Let's just take a look at the runners first off. So first off, we are gonna have a few marking stickers for this. Looks like just a few little pink camera stickers there and then some of that yellow striping we'll be putting on the kit. And then no polycaps for this kit, so we can get right into the runners here with runner A2 in purple. Obviously, as you can see, we're not gonna be using these uh, cycle plate parts on there from the Moon Gundam. We've got two of this A2 runner. We're going to be some more purple armor parts here, and again, just the details on this kit are fantastic, so it's definitely one great thing about this kit. And then we've got some more purple armor parts here on runner C1, and then C2 is a copy of this half of the runner here. Runner D here is in just kind of a medium warm gray kind of color here for some weapons parts, as well as hand option parts, and some kind of frame joint kind of parts. And the same thing on runner E as well, we've got two of this E runner for some more joint parts. And then runner F1 is going to be our beam effect parts for this kit. For So for the little like uh, beam butterfly things, whatever they're called, on the back of the arm and then the beam axe there as well. And then we've got runner F2, which on the original kit would have been in red, but now they're just in this really dark gray. And then runner G1 as well, some more parts here in dark gray. Runner G2 is a few parts here in yellow for our little vent accents. And then runner I is going to be our new parts for the backpack here, once again in that very dark gray color, and you can see we've got two of this I runner. And finally runner J is back to purple for our new head parts for the kit. So there's what we've got to work with, let's go ahead and see what it looks like when it's all built up. And alright guys, so here's how it's going to look when it's all put together, and it's really amazing how this doesn't look like a Gundam at all. Like, obviously, the majority of the build is still the same as the Moon Gundam, and the Moon Gundam certainly looked like a Gundam, it certainly had a little bit different look to it, but this one, now that it's just basically in different colors, and just like a different head, that slight difference to it really does make it look like not so much a Gundam anymore. It really does look a lot more like the Sazabi in a way, but just because of the fact that it's just got like that all one solid color, which is usually a thing we see more with like, Xeon type mobile suits, enemy type mobile suits, usually our Gundams or our main protagonist mobile suits are like the multicolored ones, right? Like we have with the Moon Gundam, so it's a really interesting change, but I think it does look great. I definitely am liking this a lot more now that I've got it actually put together, and we'll see as we try posing and stuff too, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy that. But there are a couple small pros and cons to the new parts, so we'll focus more on that. As for the articulation though, I'm not going to go over all of the articulation for the main kit just because I've gone over that all with the Moon Gundam, so if you're interested in that, you can go back and check out my Moon Gundam review if you haven't seen that. We'll just focus on just the new parts here. So as for the head itself, I mean, the sculpt of it does look pretty interesting. It's, it's alright, I think. I'm still kind of a little bit on the fence about it, but I do like the kind of mashup of design features of the new and the Sazabi a little bit. Obviously, I didn't remove the safety flags on here quite yet, but you can remove those cut those down and get nice sharp points on the commander fins you will have a seam line down the middle of the top of the head there so you will have to get rid of that and then as for the mono eye it's unfortunately just a sticker on the gray piece there it doesn't rotate or anything at all so it would have been nice if they would have been able to make that to rotate but i understand based on the just the design of the that part of the kit it's not exactly like with a zaku head where you have the space to make that part rotate 
you don't really have quite as much space to make that a rotating part uh, with this particular design, unfortunately. But amongst your extra leftover parts, you do have a second of that piece. So what you could do is if you're gonna be painting the kit, paint your mono eye on there, like on one in the center and then on another one in the, like off to the side. So like if you're wanting to then change the pose or something later on, you can basically just swap out this piece. It's a little bit of a chore to have to do that, but it's something that you could do uh, with this extra piece. And then of course we also have stickers there for the front and back cameras on the head as well. The articulation of the head is gonna be exactly the same as with the Moon Gundam, but I think definitely I like the design of this when it's more pointed down like that when you can't quite see the mono eye quite so much. It definitely looks a little bit better. Uh, as for the backpack, our other new parts here, just these are on a rotating peg there at the base and then the actual funnel rack is on a ball joint here so that can move around. Fuel tank also on a ball joint and then with it being a high grade, of course, we've got a, pen, a seam line, sorry, down the middle of the fuel tank as well. So you have to get rid of that, but not too surprising. Again, don't really like this feature of the kit just being straight out the bottom of the funnel rack. I kind of would have preferred it like more normal Sazabi style to be something like down here, which as you can see, would be a pretty easy fix to do. Just glue it in here. You would lose these functioning as thruster belts basically, but just turning them into uh, places to plug in your fuel tanks could be kind of cool. So I said, the way the funnel racks open is actually quite interesting. Instead of like uh, folding open like the Sazbi, they actually slide open out to the side. So it's a pretty interesting, cool way for Bennett to do that without making it too complicated as a high grade. That said, it's a little bit tricky to do it, but once you get those slid open, it's pretty cool. So there you go, as you can see those just slide open to the side like that. So it's a pretty cool way to do it without having to uh, work in like a, a folding gimmick in there. They just uh, slide out to the side a little bit like that and then they're much easier to remove the funnels out of here. So those just pop out and then you can put these on a base or something. Now, unfortunately, all these are nicely detailed. They don't have like a peg hole here for you to plug this onto like an action base adapter or something like that, like just like a three millimeter hole in there. It's got the opposite. So in order to put this onto an action base or like some sort of effect part or something like that, you'll have to drill a hole or something, do a little bit of modification to this. If you want to have these actually like flying out in the air. But essentially that's all that's really new about this kit. As far as the other weapons and effect parts and things like that, it's all the same as with the Moon Gundam. The D-Max here, which is very cool looking just as it is. Uh, the rifle, which again is a cool design, but exactly the same as with the Moon Gundam. Kind of wish that we would have got like at least a little bit slightly altered version of this. I understand probably canonically it just uses the same rifle as it was developed one was developed from the other. But I almost forgot about this, the happy face in the side of the rifle that you can't unsee once you see that. So sorry if you guys have never seen that pointed out before. I remember that was a thing someone pointed out back when the Moon Gunner came out and I forgot about it until just now, but there's that. And aside from this nice set of just open hands you have on there, we do also have our set of holding hands for basically the beam axe and then our trigger finger hand for holding the beam rifle as well just for the right side. Got your action base adapter which is a quite unique one but it does hold onto the suit really well. It actually plugs up underneath the back of here like this and then you can plug it onto an action base like normal. Now one thing while we're here it's great to appreciate the detail on this kit like the detail up underneath the back skirt. It has some great detail there and just overall the detail on this kit is really fantastic so don't want to don't want to miss that point in this review. And then lastly, of course, you've got four of these little effect parts for, I think it's the butterfly edge is what it's called, right? This weapon here stored in the back of the arm, just like with the Moon Gundam. So basically you can uh, equip this while it's plugged into the back of the arm, or it can be like its own throwing weapon. So just on the back of the arm, you kind of stick out like that. And again, if you've seen any reviews or anything about the Moon Gundam, if you have the Moon Gundam, this is not anything new to you, but just a reminder that that's what you can do with those. But we'll try out a few action poses here in a minute. First, we need to just take a quick peek at how this is going to look compared to the Moon Gundam just side by side. And yeah, of course, I mean, side by side, you can tell that the same design, but the just different colors and a little bit different parts of the head and the backpack give them a super different look between the two of them. So it's not like with maybe some kits where you already have one version and there's like a different color version, something comes out and you're thinking, oh, do I really want to get that? And it's basically just a different, different color of the same kit that I already have. In this case, even if you had these two up on your shelf right next to each other, they wouldn't immediately jump out as being just like two different color versions of the same kit. I think they do still look quite different enough. So that's pretty cool. I think definitely makes the Vargil worth picking up, I think. So like I said before, I would definitely recommend picking up this kit. I think it's a great kit and it's different enough from the Moon Gundam that it warrants purchasing. But that said, of course, I didn't know that it's P Bandai, so that's generally probably going to cost more depending on where you live, of course. Uh, but it's gonna cost you a little bit more money. And if it's not really a design that you're particularly all that big interested in, then obviously it's not really gonna be for you either. But if you're willing to spend a little bit money, a little bit more money to get it, 
uh, then I think it is definitely a great one. Now with the Moon Gundam itself, just the regular Reginald Moon Gundam was already a pretty expensive high grade. So this one is going to be pretty expensive for a high grade. Uh, so I'm not really sure if it's going to really be all that appealing to everyone when you could very easily get like a lot of master grades for around the same price. But it is a really great engineered kit, a really fantastically engineered kit, really, to be honest. Fantastic color separation, uh, great detail on there. Some nice accessories. The accessories are, you know, kind of simple. There's not like a ton there, but there's enough there to give you some cool options. And I think it's just an overall really great kit. The only thing that I really wished that this maybe would have come with was some water slide decals, especially some water slide decals for those yellow markings on the shoulders and on the knees uh, and on like the back of the legs and then on the arms. There's a couple little ones on there as well. But just to have those as stickers, uh, it works fine. They look fine just straight out of the box like this. But if you're going to be painting the kits, it really would have been nice if those were water slide decals. That said, not the most difficult thing to mask, just the caution stripes like that. But to have those as water slides, a set of water slides, with this being a P Bandai kit, would have really been appreciated. But I guess we can't have everything. So that's gonna be pretty much it for the review, though, guys. If you do have any other further questions or comments, of course, do feel free to leave those down below. And again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. And guys, check out the link down below to USA Gundam Store. Uh, and you can save 10% off everything there on the site using my coupon code there, Zacharelius10. So go ahead and use that. And yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.